Okay, we're going to redo another video. This is an FX 9600 from Zebra. It's a fixed RFID reader. Works off of um, PoE Plus, actually, is what I've got it set up for. There is a power jack right here. But uh, for ease, at least during this video, we're just um, going to use an Ethernet cable that's going back into my wall with a PoE injector at, a, at an outlet. So I have data. I have power through that data cable. And I have a very simple antenna here um, that is connected to one of the four an uh, antenna jacks that's there. I plug it in, and I don't know what the IP address is because it's brand new. So what you're supposed to do is to type in um, the, whoops, I'm going to type in HTTPS colon slash slash because it's a modern world, right? We use the S and then... We'll just type in um, FX9600 for the model number. And then we put in the last six characters of the MAC address for that unit. So I've got, just to show you, on the side, oops, wow. Okay, I'll try to be a little bit more careful here. On the side of these units, you'll see a MAC address label. Um, well, it's actually not a MAC address label. It's a, it's a full label with its FX9600. It's this white label. If you've got a 9600 or a 7500, look for that white label on the side. That's what you're going to put in up here. I think I remember what it's supposed to be. I think it's that. And if I type that, gee, it says secure connection failed, which is an indicator that this is a brand new reader that has some pretty old firmware on it that is not um, requiring the secure SSL kind of connection. So just go up and get rid of that lowercase s. So you're doing HTTP colon slash slash FX9600 and the last six characters of the Ethernet um, MAC address. Now if I'll put that in, hit enter, I get the home page for the reader. Okay, so there's my reader, I'm connected. Um, and I want to log into it now. Let's just see if I can do this side by side in a halfway decent way. Maybe, hopefully, maybe, maybe. All right. So uh, default um, password for these readers is change. So I'll put that in, C-H-A-N-G-E. Hit log in. And let's see if it actually takes it. No active session. Do you want to override the current session? This thing must be running a, an embedded app, so we're just going to say yes. And default password is required in this mode. Do you want to switch reader to that mode? And we'll say yes, because we're obviously going to have to go through and update firmware and all that other stuff that's here. So just hit uh, that for now. Now, put in change once again. After we go up here, you'll see now we have to put our S back in there, right? Is it doing it yet? It's still not doing it. Boy, let's try it again. So HTTP colon slash slash. Let's try putting this in. Admin and change. And it now says it's required. Do you want to switch the reader to that mode? We'll say OK. Right? And... Now, with this note, we have to go up here and, uh, sorry, um, yeah, heck with that. Let's just put our S back in there. <coughs> Pardon me. And now we get this screen. And this is because we don't actually have a security certificate on the thing. So let's just go ahead and hit advanced say accept the risk and continue and i know that makes some of you nervous but please bear with me it's going to be fine all right hit c h a n g e tap login and now it should come in with this now ssl connection and say you got to change your password so say not now and we'll put in change one more time in lowercase, and then put in your new password of choice. 
right? Okay, there we are. You can hit save on that. And it'll say something like self sign certificate error. Click here to add that and go ahead and do that and just repeat all this crap once again. When you actually deploy these in production, you'll be putting a certificate on there. Um, but for right now, we're just trying to get up and running, see what our firmware level is, upgraded if we need to. Try it once again with login. Yeah, now we, our browser doesn't give us that error. And the next thing you want to do, you want to look at here is, well, do I even have functionality? Well, I'm seeing the home page, right? Uh, you could go up to read tags really quick and just hit start and stop and I get a tag. Now, I must have some filters on this thing and just seeing one tag or I have the power down, whatever it is, but I'm seeing something. So I have validated that I am reading something. Um, I take, here's another string of tag, tags here. I'll just put those on top and let's do it again. Start and stop and you'll see I got a bunch more tags. So, okay, we have some basic functionality and that's great. Let's go back up to home. Let's check a few things. The latest firmware here is 325.70. Let's take a look and see what we need to do to update this if need be. So I'll put in Zebra FX9600 firmware in a Google search. Should bring me right to that page where I can download the latest firmware. And look, uh, my latest one is, the one I have is 25.7 but this is looking for 28.1. So I'm going to go ahead. I believe I already have 28.1, but I'm going to go ahead and download it again. Let's just do that. All right. And I'm going to look at the release notes because I'm not 100% sure if uh, I need to come up to something newer. Nope, I should be fine. Uh, I can go up to there even if I'm above 321, and I'm at 325. So I should be fine with that file okay so now let's come back here and that's the first thing i, I really want to do with this reader then um, i have a connection it's a uh, ip address is going to end in 143 here so we have that we can get rid of this old way of doing it and just open up a new browser and just put in the same thing i can put in http colon or s colon slash slash and then that I say 143, put that in, and I should then get um, this same process here, right? And I'll put in the new one, and it's going to say, hey, somebody else is trying to grab that. Uh, do you want to overwrite it? And yeah, it's in another browser tab. So I'm going to hit OK. Um, close that one. And I'm back here. And same kind of thing. Each time you do this, for the day, you're going to have this until we solve this certificate issue, which will be a, a, a video that we'll do down the road here. But for right now, just kind of go through this process. Remember, this is really only to configure the page. Uh, it's not a daily thing that you need to do for receiving tag data via this thing. So, all right, over on the left, you'll see firmware. Um, we're going to say update, and I prefer file-based uh, just because it's just a little easier. I'm going to go back to the uh, downloads folder here. I should see, there it is. Um, I will extract this, and when I'm done, um, you'll see I've got all of these files, and we want to reference all of those files. So in Update, file-based, browse, go to downloads, um, there we go, in the unzipped folder, oops, uh, something is not right there, I must have picked the zipped one, I think I did. 
There it is. That's the one I want. And I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these files, all of them. Okay. And just say, okay. I selected 13 files. Do not check update all partitions unless there is some stated reason to do so. It'll just take a long time. I'm going to hit the start update button um, and pause, and then I'll come back and restart the video. Okay. This is going to go through quite a long process. If I show you the what happens to the LEDs here, um, they'll do some series of blinking. It's going to blink red while it's doing a firmware update. That's a good indicator that good things are at least happening for now. And I'll pause and we'll come back when it gets closer to the end. Okay, um, I believe we're back. Let me take a look. Uh, yep, I'm still recording, excellent. <laughs> All right, so if you look down, my green light is back on my um, reader. It has fully rebooted, and you just saw my screen try to refresh there. So I'm going to log in again. And this time it should show us the, the latest. I guess we still have to do this self-sign thing. Um, uh, yeah, that's not what I'm trying to go to. So let's go just to that home page there. Hit login. There we go. Do the self sign thing again just to kind of get it out of your face. Well, now that's interesting, isn't it? Huh. Well, perhaps we will just leave it like this and do not answer that message at the bottom. Yeah, forget about that for now. I just wanted to basically show that the software has been updated to 328.1. And one of the key things about the 328.1 is that it does have some enhanced security, which is also obviously causing some, some issues here until we get a certificate installed that works. So um, that's a good thing. Um, okay, so I'm going to end this video at this point. We've done a, a good uh, starting point here of connecting using the MAC address or the white label on the side. We verified that we actually had some uh, read capabilities here. Um, and it looks like if I actually try to read tags now, it's still going to say, oh, there we go. Nope. It's not going to let me do it until I get through this thing. So I, I may have to reboot one more time. Or maybe what I need to do is just um, refresh. Um, but our firmware has been updated. And I think in the next video, I'll go through um, some basic communication modes. One is using the serial port. And one is using um, IoT connector. Um, and to show you the, the key differences between uh, those two connection um, options, okay?